I've waited several months and then finally decided to buy the 7950X 3D. It needs to be said that I also own a regular 7950X along with the 13900K by Intel. After having tested the X3D model for myself now, do I regret buying it? Yes and no. There's two things I discovered while testing this Ryzen processor. First of all, it's not as good as many of you expect it to be, and secondly, it has an incredible ace up its sleeve not enough people talk about. So yes, there's criticism as well as praise for today's CPU. Meet the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X 3D. Essentially, a regular 7950X equipped with AMD's 3D V-Cache along with some fine-tuning to which we'll get shortly. Price. In June 2023, the 7950X 3D retails for about 690 to 700 US dollars. Whereas the regular 7950X by now can be had for far less and dropped in price. Also, the X3D model does cost a fair bit more than the 13900K by Intel. So is AMD capable of not only outdoing themselves again, but also the competitor Intel? Eh, let's cut back on the hype a little. Architecture. So what are the differences between the 7950X 3D and the 7950X? Primarily, the cache. The layout of 16 Zen 4 cores and 32 threads still remains the same. Both CPUs come with an I.O. die, as well as two CCDs, both of which are packed with 8 cores respectively. One of the two CCDs remains identical to the ones of our usual 7950X. The other CCD, however, features an additional 64 MB of L3 cache. So with the 7950X, we are getting a total of 64 MB. On the 7950X 3D, that's twice as much, 128 MB total. But since those two CCDs are not identical, therefore have different characteristics and introduce new variables such as heat sensitivity etc. Under loads, the two CCDs will be running at different clock speeds and in turn will offer different performance. Meaning the OS, the UEFI BIOS, chipset drivers and even games need to be optimized to make the most out of this 3D vCache technology. By now, there have been lots of optimizations in the last few months, so we now see great improvements. Now, since the 3D vCache is pretty sensitive to heat, the CPU's max temperature was lowered from the previous 95 down to 89 degrees Celsius. That's also one of the reasons AMD reduced the TDP from those intense 170 watts down to 120. Test setup. For the motherboard, I went with the ASRock X670E Taichi Carrara. As for the RAM, the Kingston Fury Beast RGB with 32GB, 6000MHz and CL36 timings. All is being cooled by the Be Quiet Pure Loop 2 FX 360mm AIO liquid cooler. My graphics card, the ASUS RTX 3090 Tough Gaming OC, as a matter of fact, turned out to be a GPU bottleneck, which is why I had to be more creative this time around and ran separate additional special tests for you. More on that shortly, but before that, let's take a look at the clock speeds. Compared to the 7950X, it becomes obvious that we have to sacrifice quite a bit of clock speed on the X3D CPU. CCD number one that comes with the extra cache clearly clocks about 500 MHz lower at full load. CCD number two luckily only goes to show a drop of roughly 150 MHz. As far as boost clocks are concerned, AMD states both CPUs should be able to achieve a maximum of 5.7 GHz. However, to my surprise, it's only the X3D model achieving that and even exceeding that by 25 MHz. In games, the regular 7950X and close to every instance clocks higher than my 7950X 3D does. That's most likely due to the lower default stock power limit on the X3D part. The 7950X is rated at a TDP of 170 watts, which translates to a power limit of 230 watts. The 7950X 3D, on the other hand, is rated at a TDP of 120 watts, therefore runs with a stock PPT value of 162 watts. 
performance, productivity. In the Cinebench R23 multi-car test, we see the 7950X 3D 6% behind the regular 7950X and nearly 8% behind the i9 13900K at auto stock settings. In this single core run, there's hardly much of a difference between the two AMD flagship SKUs, the drop behind Intel's 13900K by about 10%. 7 zip benchmark. Here, there are only a few points separating the X and X3D models. The 13900K drops behind by at least 6%. In V-Ray 5, the X3D chip performs 4% worse than the X chip, yet 6% better than the 13900K. In the Corona rendering test, all three top-of-the-line processors end up in a tie. Moving on to the Blender Open Data test. The 7950X and 13900K are sharing the number one spot. The 7950X 3D is roughly 3% slower. In Handbrake, we are yet again witnessing a close race with the two Zen 4 flagship CPUs performing a few seconds slower. Vegas Pro 20 allows the 7950X to take this spot at the top, while both the 13900K and 7950X 3D are noticeably slower here by a bit. Gaming. And this is where I have to interrupt and clear a few things up. My RTX 3090 no longer is capable of showing any meaningful performance improvements and gaps with the addition of this X3D CPU. I ran into a big GPU bottleneck and in theory need a more powerful GPU for future CPU tests. In fact, that's exactly what I have planned. But in the meantime, I've ran my usual 1080p and 1440p tests. Following that, though, I included a separate set of 720p tests, as unrealistic those may be for today's standards. Still, those allow me to better showcase the differences and gaps in CPU performance. Thank you for understanding. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it comes as no real surprise, these top-of-the-line CPUs offer a neck-and-neck -neck race. AMD is minimally doing a little better here. In Borderlands 3, the 7950X 3D is taking the lead, offering 16% higher FPS than the 7950X and even 8% more than the 13900K. In Cyberpunk 2077, the X3D model now finally can somewhat keep up with the Intel flagship, more or less. Intel only leads by a mere 2% here. Far Cry 6, the 7950X 3D is leading once more. It's almost 14% faster than the 7950X and 3% ahead of the 13900K. In the racing game Forza Horizon 5, those Zen 4 processors in general are doing quite well. We only see a marginal improvement on the X3D part in that specific scenario. Same can pretty much be said about all tested CPUs in the title GTA 5. It's just the 1% lows that show minimal improvements. Things are luckily getting a little more interesting in Horizon Zero Dawn, the X3D CPU being ahead of the rest. 2% ahead of the X model, and nearly 8% faster than the 13900K. There's also a roughly 11% advantage to be measured on AMD's side in terms of 1% lows. In Metro Exodus, Intel reclaims their throne, but it's a close one. Here the X3D chip doesn't even perform any better than its brother 7950X. Red Dead Redemption 2 at first glance may appear to deliver boring results, but upon closer inspection we see the 7950X 3D not only offering 25% smoother 1% lows than the 7950X, but also 12% better results compared to the 13900K, which in the averages is leading. The test run Rise of the Tomb Raider ended up not so spectacular, despite the X3D performing 2% better. Shadow of the Tomb Raider doesn't really show any meaningful results in my test. This simply screams GPU bottleneck. Nonetheless, for the sake of completeness, the gaming average FPS. Despite my obvious GPU bottleneck, the 7950X 3D on average in those 11 games tested manages a lead of almost 4% over the regular 7950X. The 13900K isn't far behind though. So as frowned upon my following move may be, here are my gaming results at 720p to better illustrate and work around my GPU bottleneck. 
Assassin's Creed Valhalla shows that between the 7950X 3D and 7950X, there is no noteworthy performance difference measurable. Still, AMD is offering a nearly 5% higher frame rate on average. Borderlands 3. The X3D model performs respectable 36% better than its X counterpart and 14% better than the 13900K. The 7950X 3D, however, is not able to land the number one spot in Cyberpunk 2077 just yet. It's still behind the 13900K by a mere 2%, but at least 16% ahead of the 7950X. In Far Cry 6, in its 720p test, Intel is taking the lead once more, the X3D CPU being 22% faster than the regular model. Forza Horizon 5. X3D is barely any faster than the regular X chip, yet 8% faster than the Core i9. In GTA 5, all CPUs listed deliver about the same frame rate, only minimally differ as far as 1% lows are concerned. Horizon Zero Dawn. All things considered, X3D is able to land 5% ahead of the X CPU and 6% ahead of the 13900K. Metro Exodus practically goes to show a clear tie for all CPUs involved. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the 7950X 3D manages to overtake its X counterpart by over 8%. Intel still remains on top by 3 FPS. Rise of the Tomb Raider makes the X3D chip perform 9% better than the X CPU. The 13900K, on the other hand, is offering the smoother 1% lows. Last but not least, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Here we are yet again witnessing a tie, more or less. X3D capable of delivering 21% higher 1% lows as opposed to the 7950X, though. This now brings us to the gaming average FPS of the 720p tests. The 7950X 3D manages to overtake the 13900K by a small margin, on average by 2%. The irregular 7950X model, on the other hand, drops behind the X3D chip by nearly 8%, and that are even almost 10% in terms of 1% lows. Power consumption and temperatures. Now here we are finally dealing with the 7950X 3D's ace up its sleeve that I've mentioned in the beginning of the video. Obviously, this happens to be a shockingly efficient CPU, and it goes to show what Zen 4 is basically capable of. At full load, the 7950X 3D in my test draws exactly 102 watts less than the 7950X at default stock settings. That's 27% less. Compared to the 7950X 3D, Intel's counterpart, their 13900K, in the worst case, at its auto settings, consumes up to 211 watts or 77% more power. At best, 141 watts or 51% more power from the wall. Things are looking real bad for AMD though when glancing over to the idle power draw. Both the 7950X as well as its X3D version consume roughly 36 watts or 42% more at idle. Neither Intel nor AMD are truly inspiring and worth looking up to here. Now let's take a look at the power consumption while gaming. Here we quickly come to the realization that there's give or take 101 watts separating the 13900K and the 7950X 3D for effectively plus minus the same gaming performance. While the regular 7950X still appears more attractive than Intel's i9 here, it doesn't shine either. Last but not least, the temperatures. Honestly, it's become a bit of a challenge cooling both Intel and AMD flagship CPUs nowadays. What I do like though is that the 7950X 3D with the identical CPU cooler now runs noticeably cooler than 95 degrees Celsius. It has to, according to AMD. Conclusion Now to get back to the question of the beginning, do I regret buying the 7950X 3D? No. While I honestly did expect more, especially greater gaps in gaming results, although that might be due to my GPU limitation, I also expected smaller performance losses in multi-threaded applications. Nonetheless, I'll gladly take the few percent lower multi-core performance in exchange for a drastically lower power draw any day. It needs to be said though that even the 7950X can greatly be optimized both in terms of power consumption and temperatures. 
So the advantage of the 7950X 3D lies within the fact that for less experienced users, there's no need to go through any further optimizations. I myself tried further lowering power draw and temperatures, but to no avail. AMD, it seems, have already squeezed out most of their X3D CPU as far as power efficiency is concerned. With that in mind, the 7950X 3D's existence is giving Intel a much bigger slap in the face in terms of power consumption than it was the case before. Not only does the 7950X 3D draw up to 210 watts less power at full load compared to the 13900K, but also around 100 watts less while gaming. The argument, Intel consuming less when gaming, is not working here. But AMD doesn't only deserve praise here. The high idle power draw is quite shocking too and in my opinion deserves a lot of criticism. The Ryzen 9 flagship CPUs consume 30 to 40 watts more than their Core i9-13900K counterpart when idling. As an owner of all three CPUs, the 7950X 3D, 7950X and 13900K, I would still consider the 7950X 3D the best out of the bunch overall. However, if you don't care about squeezing out every last bit of possible performance in games, additionally, wish for slightly higher raw performance, wish to save some money, and on top of that, have the patience and will to go through the optimization process, you could just as well simply go with the cheaper, regular 7950X. But this is where the 13900K becomes a great alternative as well. In summary, the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D truly is a great CPU and definitely worth recommending for hardcore enthusiasts out there. With that said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.